Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and this is our weekly TV news video, obviously we talk about the news of the week in terms of TV but we also use this video as a kind of a weekly wrap up on the channel, give any updates about things going on, we also pick our favourite episode of TV at the end of the show of the week. Uh, so that's what's going to happen. Uh, in terms of this week, there was a lot of finales this week. We had the, the Fargo finale, we had the Saul finale, uh, we even had the, the American Gods finale, was that this week? Yeah, it was. It, it just feels a long time ago. It was Sunday. It feels a long time ago because there's been too many finales. And then, then we had another two finales after it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had a lot of finales this week. And yeah, I, th I think that was... Uh, nothing started this week yet, right? Uh, you had the pilot of The Mist, which you did with Tim. Oh, God, yeah. That was only yesterday. You're, you've, tr you've tried to get rid of that from your mind already by the sounds of oh, it. Oh, Mist, Mist, that, that Mist TV show is absolutely abhorrent. Well, I am so glad I didn't watch it. <laughs> now, me and Tim did it. Me and Tim also did the movie on streams after midnight. So check that out by all means, because we had a good conversation about the film. Uh, check out a review, even if you like. Don't don't care about spoilers. Just go in and listen to everything we said. It's Not better, bad. <laughs> better, better than watching the show. Trust me. Trust me. Absolute garbage. Uh, ca cannot recommend it at all. Um, we also uh, today uh, Netflix new show Glow came up. When uh, this is a weird week of me doing TV reviews with other people because me and Matt are going to be reviewing that. We've not recorded it yet, although it's probably going to go up before this news, so that should already be up. That's the new Netflix show that came out today. Uh, table recording uh, is the sort of the ladies of wrestling. Uh, it's based on a real thing that happened in the eighties, but it's, it's mostly fictional from what I understand. Starring Alison Brie. Uh, I've already watched that actually. Quite liked Did it. You? Did you? Yeah. Okay, you liked it. Okay. A lot, lot of neon and synth and stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm digging these period pieces. Like between this and Stranger Things, my eighties fix is just well, well served. Well that's served. Good to hear. Uh, but no, that's that, that's that. So, uh, yeah. So let's get into news. That, that, that's all the stuff that happened. Well, actually, other than the fact that we had so many technical faults and, and delays due to various things on various shows, which really messed up our week. Uh, in a big way, because for example, uh, episode four of Already Cancelled, uh, Leftovers is supposed to be up already, and we actually recorded most of that last night, and then there was an error, the program crashed, and the file was dead. Yeah. So we have we to. Just, do it again. We just didn't have it in us to record it all again. Not it was really. A really late. good discussion, and we were like, okay, we need to wait. Yeah. So so we're doing that later, t later tonight. So that is coming, but uh, it's been a complete mess this week in terms of recording stuff. But here we go. We're on news. Let's let's talk about news. So we got some uh, premiere dates and return dates to start off with. That's the first thing up this week. Standard. Uh, Exorcist is returning on Friday the 29th of September. Not really any surprises. No, I, I, I guess I'm only mildly surprised they didn't decide to push it two weeks so they could start on Friday 13th of October. Yeah, I could have seen that. Um, I think it did start on October. I think it was the 1st of October last year, if I remember right. I could be wrong. Yeah, this is probably the closest Friday to that. Yeah, yeah. I, basically... I just feel like I'm just surprised from a marketing standpoint they didn't push it a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think I think in terms of hitting the start of October, I think it was like it was either the 29th you thought it was going to be like the, the 5th or whatever it is. Yeah. And they, they just decided to go with this one. So it's, it's starting end of September. Um, also on Fox, The Gifted, which is the new X-Men show starring Amy Acker, that is starting on Monday, October 2nd, so that's the just the following Monday. Okay. So, so that's when that's starting. Um, Star Trek Discovery is a big one, we've been waiting for release dates for a long time. Um, that is going to premiere on Sunday the 24th of September. Uh, they're doing kind of a, a Twin Peaks-esque thing with the first episode where... Episode 1 is going to debut on CBS, as they double said it was going to, but Episode 2 is going to be immediately available afterwards on the streaming service, and so you're getting two episodes that first that first day, uh, which is cool. Other than That's going to be a busy week. Oh, sure, yeah, because we're right in the middle of yeah. new, new stuff at that point. Uh, the other thing to note here is that they announced that the season will be split in two. Uh, it's a 15-episode season, so what they're doing is that you're going to get the first day, which... Because they're showing the first two in the same night, it's actually seven weeks, so it's a neat two seven week uh, sort of split. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so the the first half will obviously start on twenty fourth of December. It runs to about fourth or fifth of November, whatever day that Sunday falls on, and then the second half of the season starts in January, uh, twenty eighteen. So I'm I'm not thrilled about the break. Um, I mean, the cynic in me is saying this is production is still having some troubles you know they're still a little bit behind what they were expecting but they're like we can't push it anymore 
but we can get these ones ready and then give ourselves an extra couple of months for the for the back half. My only dispute with what you just said is I, I'm going to give them more more benefit of the doubt and, and dispute the word troubles because that's really no different to any network show which has breaks oh, all throughout not. the season. Oh, it's not. It's not. No. So I'll say I, I, I just say troubles in the fact that you know they were clearly planning for whatever date and it's it's gone okay we can't quite do it but yeah we work around it. It's it's the same as any other show though that has breaks. Uh, maybe it, it wasn't is. planned that way at first. It it just means they're behind schedule. That is, I, I think yeah. troubles maybe a bit harsh, and if it's just going a bit slower. Yeah, yeah. It's. I'll be really interested to see if that if they treat it like a, a mid season final, and if it if it's a maybe clean it split in that sense, or if it is just oh no, just oh, we just decided to split it here for whatever reason. Uh, maybe they decided that a while ago. Maybe they swap some yeah. things around to make it work because we never decided that. I don't know. Uh, but there you go, so that's coming in September. I'm excited about this. I'm looking forward to the new Star Trek I show. Know. It's nice to finally have it coming. Look at that, three shows in a row that we, we really care about. And that one's only nine months late. Yeah. Uh, also, premiere day, oh, we, we're not particularly fussed about this one, but I know some people will be very excited about it. Uh, Wet Hot American Summer, ten years later, which is the new season. Because they, they did the uh, the first day at camp, I think the, the last season was, which was a revival of the movie from the early 2000s that has a pretty insane cast now, because like, Paul Rudd's in it. Uh, yeah, they, they all got pretty big, didn't they? Yeah, they, they all got big after the movie was made, so, they, so it was actually quite impressive that they brought them all back for this show. Uh, and I never watched the show. I actually watched the movie when the show was about to come out, just to see if, it, and it was okay. Like it was fine. I, I never got around to watching the show. Um, but I remember even thinking, "This is weird." Like it's because it's meant to be first day of camp, but it was made like fifteen years later, so it's meant to be like a prequel to the movie. But all the actors are like clearly middle aged now, compared to like yeah. early twenties or whatever they were at the time. Uh, so that was amusing. Whereas this one is ten years later, so it's still not quite enough. <laughs> but it's it's closer. Step in the right direction. It's a lot closer, especially if I remember correctly. The movie ends with like, like a like they all promise to see each other again in ten years. So I remember thinking at the time, why is that not the season then? Why is that not the, <laughs> why is that TV show they're doing? Is that season two? That's season two. Yeah. So uh, fair enough. There is a trailer for this. I never made you go watch this because it wouldn't really mean anything to us. I didn't watch it either. Yeah, yeah. But I, I heard a lot of good things about the the show as well, though. That's like the right. people who. If they enjoyed the movie, typically enjoyed the show. Yeah, uh, eight episodes. It's debuting on August fourth, so we're starting to get the August Friday content from Netflix rolling out and the announcements. Oh, here we go. So that's a week off for us. We don't do we don't do this one. So that's nice. Uh, but no, so that's fun stuff. I think the first one might have been ten episodes, but that's not a lot of big yeah, loss. Yeah, that sounds about right. But hell, you're getting eight episodes of Wet Hot American Summer ten years later, uh, August fourth. So look forward to it. Uh, and obviously we know two weeks later after that's the Defenders, so we've got two other Fridays to fill on Netflix, assuming they're mm. filling each week, which it feels like now they are. You know what, six months ago, I'd have said no, but now it feels like every it Friday's got a show. feeling like that, yeah. Unless yeah. they've got a particularly big movie, perhaps, on one of those. Yeah. But uh, it makes me excited about what's what's going to get announced. Alright, so that's all the, the premiere dates and whatnot that we've got. Uh, next up, we have some Handmaid's Tale oh. Season 2 news. <laughs> Uh, Connor fighting back one of his hiccups. He has chronic hiccups, just in case you're new to the channel and you're not used to them. Because I feel like you actually do a decent job of hiding them most of the time. It's just sometimes they get through. Yeah. But sometimes they get through. And it actually sounds worse when you hold it in and it comes out as this little weird pathetic squeak. Because it's not even clear it was a hiccup. You just sound like you're dying. So I feel the need I mean, to I point it like out I'm dying. and acknowledge it. Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm you, glad you, you feel you that wish. way. Yeah. yeah, but... Yeah. Uh, Handmaid's Tale Season 2, we've got some news here. Uh, just a little bit of casting. Uh, Alexis uh, Bledel, or Bledel, however you pronounce her name, uh, from Gilmore Girls, her. <laughs> she, right, she was okay. off Glen in Season 1 of Handmaid's Tale. Uh, she's been added to Season 2 as a regular. Well, that's interesting. Now, we can't really talk about this much because obviously it would spoil the plot of the first season, uh, but that is a very interesting development. Mm, absolutely. Uh, very interesting development, so... I'm curious. I like Torn Season 1, so I'm glad to see more of her. Uh, but it is definitely a curious, curious, interesting thing. Mm. Anyway, uh, next up. Now, we don't care about this show, right? We don't care about this at all. But I just wanted to talk, just bring this up quickly. Because I feel like I want to bask in its, in its troubles, I guess, maybe is the, the way to put it. 
So we were. Oh, baffled. Is this one of our hated shows? We were baffled when NBC renewed Taken, especially at the time because they'd cancelled the uh, Timeless yeah, instead. I was not happy about that. So they've renewed Taken for season two. They changed the showrunner. They, they already did that. That happened months ago. Oh, okay. They are now replacing six cast members for season two. <laughs> six! Count them! Six. six! Did they only have one season contracts? Did they not lock them in for longer? No, apparently they, they want to shake it up. They're basically doing a soft reboot <laughs> in season two. Oh my god. Um, and the funny thing is, apparently the ratings weren't that great uh, domestically, but it did well internationally, and it's cheap to make, which is why they wanted to bring it back. So... I just I, I wanted to, I thought I just I I read the headline Taken is replacing six cast members and I I just started laughing. Are, are they still playing the same characters or are they just I don't think do, so. Do, oh, I, okay, I, that, that's something at least. When you I say replacing yeah. cast members, sounds like you're just replacing the actor with the same. Yeah, but character. it sounds like they're gutting most of the show. It sounds like if you're not one of the two lead characters, you're probably not in season two. <laughs> the sounds of it. Because <laughs> six is oh. a lot. A six is a lot. Like of imagine, a... imagine any show you watch, like taking six of the main cast out of it. I, I can't. One feels like you know, like if someone dies in your show. T- t- take Buffy the Vampire S- the Slayer for example. They had yeah. television show from the yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Any excuse to count them. All right. Imagine taking six. There's only six people in those opening titles, from what I recall at the start of the show. Buffy, sure. Xander, Willow, Giles, Cordelia, and Angel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Exactly six characters in the opening title sequence. Right, you assume Buffy is safe just because yeah, yeah, her, her, her name's on the show. Yeah, and okay, you can maybe argue some recurring characters like maybe Miss Calendar, maybe Principal Snyder, if you really want to push it. They feel like stretches, but let's just say you're going to count them. You'd still be losing four of those six in the, the, the main title se- sequence. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a completely different show at that point. Aye, right, well, you've, you've got Blandy McBlanderson in the lead role, so that's okay. Do you know what? I can't remember what he looks like. <laughs> like I genuinely can't. He was a white dude. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I think he had dark hair, but that is about it. That is I literally I cannot picture his face in the slide. I don't, I don't know what it looked like at all. Because he was Blandy McBenderson. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't that long ago we watched this. I should, you know, I should be able to remember what one guy looks like. Well, if, if they want to cast someone who's mundane as human as possible, that's the result. So you, you get me not remembering who. What all, I'm like. th- all I can see is I go, I hear it, I go, Liam Neeson. It's like, no, it's not Liam Neeson. <laughs> get out of your head. Go away, Liam Neeson. <laughs> it just it doesn't work. All right. Uh, next up, Paramount Network, which is Spike uh, come January, uh, is developing a single camera comedy based on the life of Tom Arnold. Are you familiar with Tom Arnold? Do you know who that is? Uh, not off the top of my head. Uh, actor, he was in True Lies. Uh, okay. Yeah, he was in a lot of comedies. He was in a he was in a movie called Carpool, I think, and he was also in a a movie with Rick Moranis called Big Billy, I believe. He was in, he's been in all this stuff. I'm sure I'm forgetting some of his big big roles that people are going to be shouting at the screen. Uh, but that, that's where I know I know from True Lies mainly. Like True Lies is the big one, but um, yeah. So it's a uh, it's currently t- titled the and. <laughs> And this is this is a long word. Interventionalist. Okay. You know, that was long enough that I had to look at it and just think about how it was going to be said before I before I blotted it out. I couldn't just go with it. I had to think. <laughs> I think the best part is you could see you looking at it and thinking about it. Yeah. Well, it's because there's so many goddamn syllables. I had to just plan them all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, but yeah, it's, it will follow a recovering addict, uh, and an interventionalist for substance abusers in LA. So. Which, admittedly, on its own doesn't really sound like the premise for a comedy, but I can see how they'll, they'll maybe make yeah. it funny. Yeah, but you did just watch The Mist, which I believe was from Spike TV, so this rebranded better shake up the quality. <laughs> yeah, this rebranded better do some work, because I'm not feeling it right now. <laughs> oh, um, Alright, so let's get on to the meat. We'll get some meat to talk about this week. Unlike last oh. week, where we had nothing interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, that... that what we just had there is probably three times as much as we had last week. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, some of those dates at the start, Star Trek Discovery, premier date, that's pretty, that's relatively big compared to what we had last week. So that, that's, you know, th- but this is meat in terms of new things to talk about. Oh, come on. So first up, first up, um, let me put a little extra space here. I don't like how that's formatted. All right, next up, uh, Damon Lindelof is working once again with HBO 
on a Watchmen TV show. This is mighty interesting. HBO has refused to comment on it at this point. So we don't have any real information here. Yeah, this is just the, the unofficial word. I mean, I mean, I, th- I think, yeah, I mean, they're developing it. It's not been ordered yet. So uh, it's worth mentioning that HBO did try to like, develop a Watchmen show in 2014 that went nowhere. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. It's a complete fresh take, fresh start uh, from Lindelof. Given that it's Lindelof, though, and he's a name that has like some cred, with them in particular, uh, given yeah. leftovers, I expect this will probably happen. Yeah, it feels like, okay, he's, he's wrapped up leftovers. We we want to keep him around in the family. What can we get him doing? Yeah, um, and you know, obviously a lot of people are very negative whenever his name comes up on the internet. It's very popular to hate on him. I don't get it. Uh, some people really don't like how Lost ended. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And I am not one of those people. I'm quite happy with, for the most part. I mean, I'm not saying there was nothing I'd change about the, the, the last season of Lost, but certainly I, I was more more or less happy. Mm. Uh, Leftovers is good so far. Uh, I've heard people love that. I, I the, the people who tend to defend them are people who have watched Leftovers, it seems to be. Uh, Prometheus is another thing that he gets a lot of hate for. Although, after Alien Covenant, I'm pretty sure he wasn't the sole one to blame because he had nothing to do with Covenant. And yeah, it was. He was probably what made Prometheus watchable. Well, I mean, Ridley Scott, good visuals. He, right, he does great yeah. visuals, right? But. Oft. Oft. Uh, no, so. Uh, but no, I'm kind of optimistic about this. Now, admittedly, there's some people who would say Watchmen shouldn't be touched; it should be let alone. I can all, I can all, I can almost hear Alan Moore in the distance just screaming into the night. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, he's, he's probably his... not that. He's probably not that far away if you want to hear him. Ah, uh, dear. You can hear him at any point in the world. It's just him just shouting about this. Yeah, well, he's he's, he's a loud man. He likes to shout about he it. He is. But he, he, he that, that, I think this. T- for me, there's no sacred cow. For me, you can do a Watchmen TV show. Obviously, it has to be different from the book because it's going to last however long. Like, it has to be a different yeah, thing. Yeah, unless they come out and say it's a limited series. And even then, like, how long could it be, really, and just stick one season at most? Like, of like. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. If it's a yeah. limited, you know, like, this is a one thirteen episode season or whatever. Yeah. Which I, I mean, I guess they could do that. I mean, it would work, but I don't. They think, could, I, but it, they don't want to give up the, the, the cash cow that easy. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's going to be that small, though. It feels like they're wanting to have a series out of this. Um, and I can see it. I could see them having flashbacks, like have like ongoing, like have have like two timelines and have the Minutemen and the in the past yeah. uh, going along at the same time. I can see that happening, and I can see it being more of a larger sort of ongoing conspiracy that maybe leads to the, or maybe it could just be set before the book. Maybe like the final season of the show would be the book. And everything would be building up to that kind of thing. Yeah, because obviously there's there's also the the before Watchmen comics to draw from. That's true. I've never read those myself, but I've um... read a couple just because I ended up picking up a couple for free. Hmm? My shop was giving them away at one point, so I was like, "Yeah, why not? I'll give it a try." <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's some some are better than others, but there's clearly material there for them to draw from. Sure, sure. Um... So I'm not I'm not against this, and let's be honest, it wouldn't take a lot of skill to outdo the movie that we got already. No, I mean I quite like the movie personally, but I agree that it could that, that there's much better that could be done. Yeah, I mean the movie's not terrible, but it, it's just it's hollow. Yeah, I think I think the movie is just about okay because it is such a a very close adaptation for the most part. So it kind of feels like it can't go too far wrong. It, it it has all the details, but it's missing the soul. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah. So no, I mean, I think this this could be fun. This could be potential. Um, I like a lot of the characters in Watchmen. If you're not familiar with Watchmen, of course, Watchmen's a kind of a set in an alter, alternate history in the eighties, uh, where this all, all the superheroes have been kind of like they've all kind of retired and outlawed. Uh, but there's a conspiracy brewing to for something big to happen, and the few remaining sort of vigilantes left kind of start to investigate it. Uh, it's kind of a satire on superheroes. That, that's kind of a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a it's a really really good comic book. If you've not read Watchmen, but it's thirteen issues, by all means, you should check it yeah, out. Yeah, there's a reason it's so widely regarded is because it, tw- it is you know deserved. Or is it twelve? It may be twelve. I think issues. it might be twelve. Yeah. Just to keep the whole clock. Yeah, that's thing, why I was thinking twelve. Whole clock thing going. Um, but no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Like, yeah, do it. Me too. Fair enough. Go for it. Next up, <laughs> Stephen Moffat and Mark Gattis are apparently developing a Dracula TV show in the style of Sherlock, meaning that it's actually going to be 
three feature length episodes per season, kind of like Sherlock is. Uh, it's early days yet, it, so it's probably going to be like at least a year, if not two, before we actually see this, if it, if it, if it actually happens. Mm. But, uh, I like the idea of doing this this way. I, I've often felt like any adaptation, even if I like some of them for what they are on their own, I often feel like they don't have the time to actually do the book justice. Like that, that uh, Francis Ford Coppola movie, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula from the early 90s, I hate that movie. Some people like it. I, I like think, it. I think that movie just, it's like a checklist just going through all the scenes in the book without, it's kind of like Watchmen, it's like, oh, all the details are there but the soul's just completely missing. There's no sense of brooding or dread or anything like that. Plus you've got Keanu Reeves doing his accent. Yeah, Keanu Reeves is the by far the worst part of that movie for me. But, so I, I really don't like that book. I feel like it misses the, 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 the tone of the of the book. Yeah. I uh, like Gary Oldman though. And Dracula is one of the few books that I've actually read. I don't do a lot of reading. I don't have time for it. But I have read Dracula and I really like that book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think three 90 minute episodes might be more in line to actually adapt it in a, in a better way. I think it should be. The problem is I, I'm not sure I trust these pair anymore. After that last season of Sherlock, I admit, yes. I mean, uh, Moffat has, has, has been losing me for a couple of years on Doctor Who. He's, he's had some moments, don't get me wrong, even uh, last season specifically towards the end, he was like, oh no, Moffat can still do it. But Gatiss, on the other hand, I can't remember the last time I enjoyed something from him. Like, probably season two of Sherlock was the mm-hmm. last time I thought that was a good thing that, that Gates has written. And even then, he typically wrote the episode twos, which were always the weakest episodes of the season. Yeah, I really like the idea of doing this. I like the idea of a Dracula show that is like three ninety minute episodes, I, and giving it the time to flesh out. However, I do have to admit I'm kind of kind of skeptical about the talent involved. But obviously, it's something we'll try. Like, there's no way we're not going to try the first episode of a Dracula TV show. Of course, and and that's the thing. As much as we're skeptical, like they have both perf- like done some legitimately great stuff in the past. So it's just a case of if they can pull it out of the bag again. Hopefully. Hopefully it's different enough and it's not as convoluted because it's by by its nature it's much more straightforward. It is, and that's my concern. Does he try and moff it up and you know he goes, Oh, I can make this more interesting? Or does he just go, No, I'm gonna tell the story. Just tell the story, please. I really hope he just tells the story, please. but I just I, I don't trust him to do that. Alright, next up, this was a late edition, I just added this into the news right before we started. Uh, Sci-Fi has ordered a pilot uh, based on a novella by George R.R. R. Martin. Oh, okay. It's called Night Flyers. And, uh, though apparently they've been wanting to try and develop this for a while. It was also a movie made about this in 1987. Uh, same name, which I've never heard of. So this is yeah, kind of out of nowhere for me, but obviously that name makes you think. Of stuff. Uh, so this is what it's about. The story follows eight maverick scientists and a powerful telepath who embark on an expedition to the edge of our solar system in the hopes of contacting alien life. Uh, they travel aboard the Night Flyer, a ship with a small, tight-knit crew and a reclusive captain. But when terrifying and violent events begin to take place, they start to question each other, and surviving the journey proves harder than anyone thought. This sounds right up my alley. I am so down for this. Now, I don't like Game of Thrones, and yeah, yeah, I'll, every time I say that on a show, there's always someone new who didn't know that, who has to comment and be like, you don't like Game of Thrones, what? Right, yes, I don't like Game of Thrones, but uh, this sounds way more my thing, and... Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, the books a lot more than the show, so... I mean, I, I like his writing in general as mm. much. You know, I think it's just better than the writing on the show for the most part. So if they can adapt that uh, and ha- have it actually come across as you know more like his style, even if they don't, even if it's just completely different from Game of Thrones, the TV show, it well, could be di- yeah. it could be different from the book, but still highly entertaining. And yeah, that's true. Solid. Uh, I, I just it, it sounds great as a premise. Like, I. I very excited about that. Yeah, I'm I'm down for it. Uh, so that's Night Flyers, uh, Sci-Fi's order the pilot. I imagine we'll see it, given the the pedigree involved. Uh, next up, CW is having another go at a supernatural spin-off. Jesus, how many they, have they had now? Uh, only the one. They tried it during season nine. They tried to have a backdoor pilot for uh, Bloodlines, was the name of that show. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, they're trying again in the upcoming thirteenth season of Supernatural. It's going on a bit now. 
they're, they're, no, that's, that's what it is. They're determined not to let this franchise die. They're like, this still brings us in, but we can't keep this show going forever. We need spin-offs. It really bothers me that there's people who were born the same year as Supernatural who are now teenagers. I mean, that's, that's, that's just too much. <laughs> Stop it. Um, but yeah, so even though I think this is a better sound than idea than the previous spin-off, because... Supernatural, of course, is a brother show. It's about two brothers who go demon hunting, right? I like the idea that the spin-off in this case is about sisters. Not necessarily actually related, but just the idea of sisterhood. Uh, it's called Wayward Sisters, which, again, Wayward ties into, you know, the rock music that always plays uh, in Supernatural. It's a big part of the show. I shows. didn't know that always play. I've not watched it. Oh, no, uh, like, there's constant... You would love the soundtrack on that show. There's constant ACDC, constant 70s rock, metal... I approve. Uh, it's it kind of surprised me. I've never watched a single episode of Supernatural. And, uh, carry on, my wayward son. I believe that all was played in the previously on in the finales. Like it it's was great. It's a great song. Because they, they, they'd always say uh, this season on Supernatural, whatever, and they'd be like, "Carry on, my way," and it would yeah. do the whole fan, previous fa- fantastic song. And it would sum up the entire season for the finale, even though not all of it necessarily would be relevant, but it would do like a sort of right whole season and encapsulate it. Time for the the finale of it. Uh, so it's fun. Um, but yeah, so it's called Wayward Sisters. Uh, it's a character who's already in the show, I think, called Kim Rhodes, uh, who would be the lead of this new show. Uh, there's going to be a, a setup for it in the 13th, so a backdoor pilot again. Uh, the series would tell the story of Rhodes' character, Sheriff. Oh, sorry, Rhodes was the actress, uh, so uh, just uh, uh, slightly mangled that. But yeah, uh, Rhodes' character, Sheriff Jody Mills, and a group of troubled young women, uh, all of whom have been orphaned by supernatural tragedy. So they're all like victims, they're all. Your Dick Grayson's and your your Batman's of demons kind of thing. So, under Mill's protection and training, these women will emerge as a supreme monster fighting force. Uh, and it also mentions that other characters from Supernatural might also head over to that show to like, help fill it out a little bit. Yeah, that sounds perfectly fun. Yeah. So I mean, like I say, you've probably, I think, when did you give up with Supernatural? Early season seven. Right, I've never watched a single episode, so that would be a, a mighty lot of catching up. Here's the thing, though: when this, when season seven airs, there'll be more show after I quit than there was before I quit. You mean season thirteen? What did I say? You mean, you said when season seven airs? Oh, when season thirteen airs, yes, yeah. there'll be more show after I quit than there was before. Yeah, no, no, uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Season fourteen will be that actually. I mean, I mean, at the end of season thirteen. If you were only at the start of seven, ah, true, yeah. So I watched. There's more. There is more for you to watch. I watched. I watched six in a little bit, so it'd be twelve and say a half would be double of what I yeah. watched. Yeah, uh, there you yeah, go. yeah. Okay, no, I was right. I doubted yeah. myself, but I was yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you were. Yeah. So yeah, well, supernatural is. spinoff. Thing we, we can count. <laughs> Barely, but sure. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, last up on the news, uh, Jamie Fox is uh, executive producing a show with Killer Impact uh, called The Displaced. It's a drama, uh, and it follows three children fleeing their fleeing war in their home country, seeking refuge from violence and finding courage through their imaginations. Uh, interestingly, that's all we get in terms of description. Uh, no network or anything like that yet. Uh, but they announced this on World Refuge Refugee Day, uh, which was June twentieth. And apparently this, this killer content, Killer Impact, because uh, Killer Impact is a division of killer content. Uh, apparently this, all of their productions are all aligned with charities. Right. Uh, based on whatever they're doing. Uh, and it's, it's about raising awareness kind of thing, mixed with also just being like a, an actual TV show. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like an interesting idea. So this is obviously focusing on refugees, uh, specifically kids in this case. Um but yeah, it's uh, dedicated to support and addressing the plight of more than 65 million refugees and internationally displaced persons worldwide, half of them who are children, uh, who have been forced to flee their homes due to war, conflict and uh, persecution. So, yeah, I'm not surprised it exists. It's a very topical issue at the minute. I mean, even to the point where the networks are doing their own variations on, you know, refugees. Yeah. Uh, I, if this is done well, it sounds like it could be a very emotional, hard watch yeah. Um, or at the same time, I could also see them going with it because it mentions their imagination. So I yeah, could, maybe it's a bit more heartwarming. Yeah, it could be a bit more of an upbeat thing where yeah, they're in this really bad situation, but the kids' imaginations let them kind of like cope with it. Uh, yeah. 
I can see a lot of potential with this, depending on how they tackle it. Yeah, obviously, quality will be a big factor. Obviously, yeah. The idea is solid. All right, well, I guess that'll take us on to the picking our favourite episode of TV of the week. So, uh, do you have one at the ready? Uh, I think I do, actually. I think, shockingly so. All right, go on. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Better Call Saul. I mean, I I considered Twin Peaks again, but I thought, (laughs) you know what? It's got the rest of the summer. Saul deserves this for that episode where it completely just subverted all my expectations and gave me a fantastic end to the season. I think that's fair. Um, I am. I think I'll agree with that. I think I will also say Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul finale was great. Yeah. And uh... so, you're, just to be clear, you're not picking the mist. Do we have a worst of the week award? Because I'd like to hand that out. We do this week. All right, in that case, the miss wins that. Thank you kindly. <laughs> bye bye. See you again next time. No, I won't see you again next time. I'll never see you again. Go away. <laughs> I was going to say, you're watching another one? Stay, stay away from me. <laughs> you awful, awful show. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, so, no, uh, yeah, there you go. And what's coming up then? Uh, obviously, uh, we have Preacher season two beginning. Uh, that's starting Sunday night. So, that'll be something we start this week. Yeah, but I think that's about it in terms of new stuff in the coming week. Unless I am being forgetful, I think that's it. I was just—I thought you were checking. Sorry, I, I was checking, but I thought—I thought I'll, I'll let you mutter oh, no, something okay. or. All oh, right, I, I thought you were checking. I was—I like, don't want to interrupt just in case there is something, and then you burst out going, "Oh, there's this," and but no, okay, I'm looking forward to preacher. I did see some stuff uh, earlier saying season two follows the comic a lot more closely. I'd expect that. Season 1 was more of a prequel. It was, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm looking forward to it. Season 1 was enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's, that's kind of it. That was a nice and painless uh, weekly news video. Uh, at least there was some meat this week, so that's nice. Uh, but that is us. So let us know what you thought of your favourite episode of TV was of the week. Uh, let us know what you think of uh, the news that we spoke about on the episode. Uh, get us on Twitter at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash uh, See some of the bonuses you can get over there and some of the goals if we hit certain amounts, that kind of thing. Uh, you can do that. But that is otherwise us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>